Hey guys, welcome back. So today we want to talk about 300 blackout 762 by 39 with a slightly different twist that may be a bit controversial. We want to talk about three basic comparisons, okay? We want to talk about price, performance, and the firearms used to launch the bullet. And if you take a look at it in that regard, in 2024, when this video is being filmed, and why I'm bringing up the date is because as of today, 762 by 39 the affordable, cheap Russian ammunition has been sanctioned. It's not been coming in the country. The prices on the ammunition is constantly rising if you can find it at all. And now we're relying on ammunition brought in from factories nobody's ever heard of. And then we're also seeing ammunition being manufactured here in the United States and in some other Western countries. But the cost of that ammo is naturally higher than the formerly dirt cheap Russian ammo that the U.S. market used to be flooded with. So taking that into consideration and taking into consideration the rise of 300 blackout, it's become an accepted cartridge. We're seeing more companies manufacturing both firearms and ammunition for it. We're seeing the price of the ammunition coming down and the cost of the firearms are the same price as a 5.56 version. So does it make sense in 2024 and moving forward to invest for a self a self protection type firearm, a hunting firearm, a, a gun game firearm, whatever, just a fun to shoot firearm? Does it make sense to invest in 762 by 39 or does it make more sense to invest in 300 blackout? That's what we want to talk about today. So let's get started talking about these two cartridges. Okay, folks check this out. There's a service that's been around for about eight years, and it's truly unique in terms of helping you buy ammo affordably, but Ammo Squared is so much more. Ammo Squared helps you stay stocked up on ammunition automatically. Ammo is delivered on demand or automatically when you need it and stored for free when you don't. It's a budget-friendly way to build a stockpile of ammo. It's customizable to your budget. You can buy as little or as few dollars a month and let it grow over time, or buy a bunch all at once so you have it when you need it. It's truly automated. It's set and forget ammo purchasing. Pick your calibers, set your budget, select a shipping trigger, and that's it. Ammo builds up over time and is delivered automatically when you want it delivered. Ammo Squared is there to help smooth out those rough spots in ammunition availability like an ammo 401k or an ammo savings account. You save up ammo for that rainy day when store shelves go empty and ammo is scarce. In 2020, when the store shelves went empty and everyone had trouble finding ammo locally or even online, Ammo Squared customers just needed to ship their ammo stored at Ammo Squared and get it immediately delivered with the click of a button. This is a unique way to invest in ammunition. Buy low, dollar cost average over time, then cash out when prices rise without ever taking delivery of any physical ammunition until you want or need it, of course. Forget about dealing with moving heavy cases of ammunition. In your garage, you can literally exchange your ammo squared inventory from one caliber to another in seconds with just a few clicks. Or Close your account and sell all the ammunition back anytime you need the money. It's effortless ammunition management. Be sure to check out AmmoSquared.com for more information. So let's just get the guns out of the way first. So 760 by 39, one of the reasons why it was so popular for so many decades was because the ammunition was dirt cheap and abundant. Well, again, that has changed. It's still out there. It's a little harder to find, certainly the old Russian stuff is, but there's still Western European manufacturers and some former Comblock countries that are still importing it into the United States, but in smaller numbers. And so the primary rifle used to fire that cartridge was also previously a very affordable rifle, and that was the AK or AKM, similar to the one that I have here. Now this one is set up for my own personal use, has a dead air Wolverine suppressor on the uh, end of it has a Russian subsonic sight system on it for using subs and all sorts of stuff. So it's been changed a little bit. But this would be, you know, an example of an AKM that people would buy. Now, interestingly enough, Jason told me about uh, a TFB video that I need to watch. James Rees did a video talking about the AK and ARs and getting an AK up to the same speed as an AR with the accessories where it can do everything that a modern AR can do, a modern $500 AR can do, you're going to spend a lot more money in 2024 getting the AK up to AR standards in terms of accessories and things like that. So the AK is losing its luster, the ammunition is losing its luster because both are going up in price, making 
other rifles like this AR-15. Now this is 21st Century Tech. This is one of their uh, 762 by 39 uh, ARs. You have CMMG that's doing them. Uh, even Palmetto State Armory has their KS-47, which is an affordable version. So you have a couple thousand dollar rifles like this, but you have other rifles that are like 800 bucks, like the PSA, which ironically is about the same price as one of their AKs. So really when it comes down to it, there's so many more choices for not just 762 by 39 but for 300 blackout and things like that outside of the AK realm. But we've had other companies that have done expensive rifles, like one of my favorites. This is the new Sig Spear. This one's in 762 by 39. Gun's very expensive. It launches a previously affordable cartridge, but again, that price of that ammunition is going up. But you have options in 762 by 39 outside of the AK. So my first complaint really is that in 2024, look guys, I love AKs. They're cool, they're classic, they're Cold War. They're everything I love, fun to shoot, reliable, reasonably accurate, as accurate as you want a military rifle to be. It's just in 2024, there's such better options out there. Now, if you wanna collect AKs like I do, you just wanna shoot them for fun like I do, whatever, that's fine. But if you're gonna ask me to compare an AK to a modern AR or Sig Spear or something like that, I'm gonna tell you, in my opinion, the AK is gonna come up short every time. Now that's a bit controversial because I know there's people out there that absolutely love the AK and think it's the best thing since sliced bread, and you're certainly entitled to your opinion. But I think if you look at things objectively, you have to admit that the AK is getting a little long in the tooth. It hasn't evolved to modern standards as readily as rifles like the AR have, and it's a bit of a dinosaur. Quite functional, still quite deadly, one of the most commonly used military rifles in the world. Don't get me wrong, it's just that if I had a choice, I would, if, and for self-defense or any type of serious use outside of just fun and collecting, I would probably go with something else. Now let's talk about 762 by 39 and 300 blackout. Where's that going? So this is where things are gonna get controversial yet again. So here we have a 762 by 39 with the steel case, and here is a 300 blackout with a 100 bullet in it. So this is from AAC, and this is a Wolf cartridge. Now, when it comes to the price, I've kind of jumped on uh, some of the aggregating sites like AmmoSeq and just taken a look at some of their prices. And it would seem that for like 762 by 39, the cheapest I can find is about 42 cents around. And then if I take a look at 300 blackout, about the cheapest I can find is 55 cents around. Now the AK ammo is getting closer to that 50 cents in most places that you go shopping. And so the prices are starting to become pretty even in terms of the cost of 762 by 39 and 300 blackout. Just a few years ago, 300 blackout, even for the cheap plinking stuff was over a dollar a round. Now it's down to 50 cents a round. Why is that? Downward market pressure. More companies are loading the ammunition. More companies are manufacturing firearms that chamber it. More people are buying it. The more people that buy it and the more companies that make stuff for it, that downward pressure brings the price down. And it's happening very quickly with 300 blackout. And because of the sanctions, 762 by 39 is going the opposite direction. So chances are in the next couple of years, they're gonna be pretty even when it comes to cost. Now with 300 blackout, you have advantages that you really don't have with 762 by 39. 300 Blackout uses a 308 bullet, and there are a ton of 308 bullets out there, right? So you have match grade bullets, you have flat based, just cheap bullets, you have varying bullet weights, you know, from 110 grains, you know, all the way up to, gosh, 185 grain bullets, maybe further. So you have a wide variety of bullets that you can load into a 300 Blackout. And 762 by 39, generally speaking, especially in the past, steel cases, yes, it can be reloaded. No, it's not really something that's practiced all that often. There are steel, I'm sorry, brass cased ammunition out there, but you have to be careful about how it's primed. Is it box or Berdan primed? And so, especially with military cartridges, they're not really intended to be reloaded, even the brass case stuff. So 300 Blackout definitely has advantages that 762 by 39 does not on the US market. So with that price coming down, stuff like that, then it becomes a matter of, well, what's the performance, right? If, if the cost is within a few cents of each other, and generally speaking, it is, unless you do some really heavy shopping, 762 by 39 is still gonna be, you know, nine cents, eight, nine cents cheaper uh, per round. But assuming those prices level out, 
what's the performance look like? Is 300 Blackout even comparable? I mean, if you take a look at 300 Blackout on the US market, you're seeing guns like this, bull pups. You're seeing, this is the only rifle I have with a 60 inch barrel, which we did for velocity testing. Um, this is an old MCX first generation with a 300 Blackout barrel in it. You have MCX's 300 Blackout. Everything under the sun is in 300 Blackout. And I hear PSA is even gonna be making a 300 Blackout AK for those of you <laughs> that are gonna want one. And why would they do that? Probably because 300 Blackout is gaining in popularity and dropping in price. Could be, just maybe. So let's take a look now at the performance of the two cartridges. We have a number of different uh, loads out here that we've tested, and we've ran them ac across the Garmin Zero, which is an absolutely amazing uh, chronograph. This thing is, our lab radar we used to use is a pain in the rear end, and I used to think it was cool compared to this. This is literally turn it on, use it, outstanding great little tool and they're right around i think 500 bucks or something like that so that's what we used for our velocity data so let's take a look at some different bullet weights different uh, velocity data and energies and see how does that 300 blackout stack up against the older soviet cartridge all right so let's compare the two ballistically so we have a number of different rounds that we've fired out here so let's start off with the 762 by 39 and some good old-fashioned wolf right here military classic all right, so the Wolf Military Classic, and I just want to point out, guys, I'm reading this stuff off my phone. My phone talks wirelessly to the Garmin Zero and transmits all this data, uh, my shot groups and all that stuff, and, and the average velocities and energies, all that stuff gets immediately transferred from there to my phone while I'm using it. And then I can put notes in there, like atmospheric conditions. I can put my bullet weight in there, which quickly gives me my, my energy, all that good stuff. So again, the Garmin is really, really cool. I'm just going to read from the Garmin app here. So let's take a look first at the Wolf 124 grain. And so we fired five shots. The average was 2,337.2 feet per second. Standard deviation was 14.3 feet per second. And it gave us a energy of 1,503.9 foot pounds. Okay. So let's see how the next ammo that we tried out here. And we're, we're talking about the Wolf is generally loaded pretty, pretty spicy. We're, we're talking about the old Russian stuff we can't get anymore right now, because this is what I primarily still have on hand. Here's some Barnoul. This is 123 grain stuff. I like this stuff because it typically gives me a little bit better accuracy than other 762 by 39 that I've used. And um, I think that might be because it's, it's just slightly a little bit slower. Sometimes when you push bullets to their extreme max velocities, you tend to lose accuracy sometimes. But anyway, so five shots of the Bernoulli, which is 123 grain. And we have a five shot average of 2280.7 feet per second with an energy of 1420.5 foot pounds of energy with an 11, a standard deviation of 11 feet per second. So pretty consistent, right? Good consistency on the bullet uh, performance and stuff like that, shot from shot. And 1420 foot-pounds of energy. All right, so those are the two 762 by 39s Let's talk about some of the 300 Blackouts. There's so many choices for 300 Blackout these days. It's really, truly awesome. So we'll just kind of go through these in no particular order. So now all this testing was done using the 762 by 39 SIG Spear and the 300 Blackout old school Gen 1 MCX I showed you earlier right here. So we have basically the same rifle, the same type of gas systems, although it's evolved quite a bit. These guns change week to week, but 16 inch barrels, similar uh, rifles. Okay. That's why we used those. All right. So the, let's see, 300 blackout, 110 grain AAC. This is uh, the stuff that's loaded by PSA. AAC owns them. We had five shots and this is a 110 grain bullet, five shots, and an average velocity of 2456.4 feet per second, a standard deviation of 29.3. All right, so that's worse than what we were getting out of the old Russian cartridges. But that gave us a kinetic energy of average energy of 1473 foot pounds, 0.7, 1473.7 foot pounds. So it's hanging right there with the energy levels of a 762 by 39. Okay, so that's pretty comparable. So what happens when we start to go up in bullet weight? Well, naturally we're gonna lose some velocity. So let's go to the 125 grain AAC. Again, PSA loaded stuff. They own the brand. Five shots, we had uh, an average of 2204.7 feet per second and a standard deviation of 16.4 feet per second and an energy of 1349 foot pounds. 
all right? So definitely the 110 is gonna give you more energy, closer to what you're gonna get out of the 123, 24 grain stuff in 762 by 39. If we go to a subsonic load for the, uh, this would be Brown Bear, this is a 762 by 39 subsonic load, presumably, but with today's atmospheric conditions, it was breaking the sound barrier. We could hear it crack down range. So out of five shots, and this was the 196 grain uh, Brown Bear, which is impossible to get now, but you can still find specialty ammo or low Jones 760 by 39 uh, to, to get subsonics. But we, we got an average of five shots, 1,111.3 feet per second, which gave us an average energy of 537.4 foot pounds, all right? So subsonics, what are they useful for? Well, they're useful for being suppressed, being super quiet. It's basically handgun energies, right? But because you're shooting a bullet that is a rifle bullet versus a handgun bullet, it's gonna maintain its velocity longer, it's gonna travel further and things like that. So it does have its advantages, but primarily it's intended for suppression. All right, so then if we move over to the 300 blackout, or back to the 300 blackout, let's take a look at the subsonic. Now this is a 220 grain, that's all we have on hand. So 196, 760 by 39, 220 federal for the 300 blackout. Five shot average, truly subsonic, 922.8 feet per second with an energy of 416 foot pounds, which makes sense. It's moving slower, although the bullet is heavier. Um, the 762 by 39 with the 196 gram bullet gave us slightly more energy. And then one of the other cartridges that I like in 300 blackout is this Black Hill stuff. This was loaded for a military contract, has TSX bullets and stuff in it, 110 grain, black tip. So I fired five rounds, standard deviation was 15 feet per second, 15.1 feet per second, but out of the five rounds, the average velocity was 2369.2, which gave us an energy, average energy of about 1,370 foot-pounds, 1,370.9 foot-pounds. With all that being said, the 762 by 39 and the 300 blackout with comparable bullet weights and things like that, they're going to be within 80 feet per second to 100 feet per second of each other. Uh, if you use lighter bullet weights with 300 blackout, you're going to get energy levels closer to 762 by 39 military ball. So I'm going to call it a wash, right? It really depends on the load that you're going to use. The advantage though goes to 300 blackout in my opinion because of the wide variety of cartridges that are available for it, more becoming available every day. The fact that it uses just a standard 308 bullet, which again, if you're a reloader, that's a reloader's dream. There's so many different choices out there. And then of course, the number of firearms that chamber it. You don't have to rely on goofy magazines. 300 blackout, if you, you shoot supers, will work in a Stenag magazine. If you wanna shoot subsonics and stack to a full 30, you'll want a dedicated 300 blackout magazine because the ogive on the subsonic bullets is different than the subsonics and they won't stack properly in a standard Stenag magazine. But with the 762 by 39 outside of the AK realm, you're relegated to using questionable quality magazines like this. But if you stick with AKs, they got good mags. But then we get into the whole discussion of the AK and how it stacks up compared to more modern firearms. And we've already talked about that. So in the end, me, I am far more interested in 300 Blackout, but that's no surprise to you guys if you watch the channel at all, because I love 300 Blackout. I've been following it since its inception, and now I truly believe it's starting to get legs of its own, and it's becoming a very interesting cartridge. If you've not played with it, you can pick up a 300 Blackout AR from PSA, dirt cheap, and go out and try it, play with it, shoot it, see if you enjoy it. I think you'll like it, especially if you're into suppressors. And if you haven't bought your first suppressor yet, do it and pick up a 300 Blackout, and you'll truly love it. So anyway, I look forward to your comments down below, guys. I know that I'm stepping on some toes. I know a lot of the AK fans out there are gonna you know, call me all sorts of names and stuff. Gotta love the internet. But again, guys, I'm trying to look at this objectively and looking towards the future based upon what we see happening politically and all that other stuff that we have to take into consideration when looking at cartridges and their practical use. Talking about impractical, just for fun, really doesn't matter. All right, comment down below. Guys, if you'd like to support us here at the Military Arms Channel, the best way to do that is to become part of our Patreon family. There's a link in the video description below. You'll get early access to videos like this one. You'll have direct access to me. I answer all private communications, and we post content just for our Patreons as well. You can hit the subscribe, and, and um, there's another button, subscribe and support, underneath the video player you're watching right now on YouTube, and you can help support us right here on YouTube in the age of demonetization. Please swing by, check out Copper Custom. Thank you for 16 years of support, and we'll talk to you guys soon. And yes, I still do love the AK.